Good evening, everybody. Let's, let's all stand for prayer, please. Greg, would you open us in prayer? Rhonda's going to come lead us in a couple of songs. Good evening. Page 652. 652. Six fifty five.
still in the hospital or, or in rehab we need to pray for Joe need to pray for I need prayer we all need prayer we need yes. prayer to change some attitudes around here definitely need that you know I I uh, I've never been in prison but I hear a lot of people around here have ever since I've been here and still here this is just yesterday that this place was a lot like prison mm -hmm. and if this, this place is a lot like prison, maybe that's why so many people always go back, because uh, I don't imagine this is what prison would be like. I, 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 think, I think it comes down to uh, everybody's upset because of all the rules that we have here, but um, I just don't, I don't see it, man. I see it more like a job, because you can, they'll, they'll let you go and come as you, as you please here, especially if you have a job go out and make money and you know there's some rules that you have to follow but there's rules that you have to follow at work at, at a job you you have to be there at a certain time and you have to leave you, you leave at a certain time just like you do here so uh and i hear you know i sit in that computer room and study and i was in there yesterday and i heard some foul some of the foulest language i've heard in a long time out on that porch and uh i mean i don't know we need we need something. I know God can help us, yes, but God ain't going to help nobody. If you, if you don't want to be helped, he's not going to help you. Amen. So, um, you know, I'm praying. I'm going to pray tonight that, that somebody, some of us want some help Amen. to get past all that. Because I, I, I used to be in the, right in the middle of all of it, but I don't like hearing it anymore. Amen. I don't have time for it. Amen. I ain't going to let nobody bring me down with it. That's my preaching tonight. <laughs> Anybody else? See? Jesus ever saved me and lifted me up out of hell, sanctified me, and I feel like trying one on. You know, the first Amen. I, it's a wonderful hope that we as a Christian have, and I'm looking forward to that day when I see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Steve, go ahead. Fourteen months ago, I was sleeping out of the porch under a bridge in the rain. I go back a year from that day or back a whole year of that. All I did was pray that I could get a change. This place will help you change. And that car I drive wasn't just given to me. I worked for it. And I got blessed to in that car. I rode my bicycle out here for many a days for 10 months. It was hard at 5 o'clock in the morning to come back here. But these rules helped me. I don't have to. No, I, I let it feed me. And if you guys don't like it, that's like he said, you know, there's other places to go. This is a blessing you ought to take home. Yeah. You know, Amen. I got 14 Amen. months of no alcohol, no drugs right now, no cigarettes. Amen. Amen. That's to make a change. We got a one day change. I'm not sleeping out in the rain, double bagging all my stuff all the time, hiding under a palm tree and then going on my bicycle looking for work. I, I would go back to my sleep spot Everybody has their high spot. You don't tell anybody. And I had a routine down. So I'd sit and listen to, to Christian Bible studies at night on my phone, whatever I had to, to get changed. In the morning, while I'm drinking a beer to get rid of the shakes and smoking a cigarette, it was ridiculous. I, I prayed to God to get me out of this. Get, make me change. Give me the desire to change. It, it happens. But I, I had to pray hard about it. I'm just thankful. Will. Um, I don't know who would say that. This place is like a good, and it's so cool. Let me tell you something. This place is really helping us. You put your mind to it, you put your mind on God, and what you need to be doing, the Lord will help you. Yeah. All you got to do is ask him. Say, ask, and you shall receive him. If you see him, you shall find You know, you have not because you ask not. You know, you got to ask the Lord for things, and God will give it to you. But you got to want to have yourself. You gotta want to help yourself. And I, I don't like when guys change the prison model, ex-wife, and my children. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
do it. Amen. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to uh, pray for the gentleman at my job, again, my co-worker, who's battling cancer. And um, I also want to say, without this structure, I would fall apart again. Yeah. So this is what, this has been nothing but a blessing to me. And without the structure and the rules and the church and being surrounded by positive people, I would fall apart again. So I need the help. And God. Amen. God. God's one that's doing it all, but we all got to let him do it. Yes, sir. And I just want to say something to the unbelievers here. That, and I've heard some people talk down on God here in the last couple of weeks. I would just want to say that this place would not exist if Jesus Christ did not die on that spot. Amen. Yes, sir. Mr. O'Neill? My family. Family, okay. All right. Henry? Yes, once again, I'd like to ask for prayer for my wife and family. Okay. But I'd also like to once again ask for prayer for a spirit of wisdom and understanding to be poured out upon this place because there's so many thoughts that are back in the spirit. We just don't know. You know, we don't understand what Black. Okay. Demetrius. Um, well, I don't, I don't know who really, you know, I, I talk about it, you know, probably fear. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I just feel like that's not for me. But I, I, don't, I don't think I ever said that this was like prison because if it was like prison, you'd be locked in the room. You know what I'm saying? Locked down and stuff like that. At least you can walk around, you know, you can smell the trees, you can see certain stuff. When you're locked up, you can't see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, and if they allow you, because COVID, they, they lock you down for like two weeks mm -hmm. until you get cleared. So you're not going outside for two weeks. You're not seeing no air, not breathing. And, um, I'm just thankful that I got a roof over my head because I remember days, you know, just going through the worst. You know, around alone stuff, kind of in and out of it, you know, but I always kept in mind that it's just not for me. I made a lot of big changes in my life, and sometimes it flashed back to me, but that's not where I'm, that's not, that's not for my future, because I know it's a dead end. You know, it's a dead end, no way out, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'm not looking for that. And I wouldn't try to condone that or preach that to anybody, tell them that, oh, yeah, man, it's cool to go do something. Wasting yourself, you know, wasting yeah. yourself, selling yourself short. So I'm thankful in a big way. I probably don't show it. Good. And that's something I keep to myself because I can I remember days, you know, when I was young and just throughout life, not really eating. So I appreciate meals. You know, I 
might have to die. So, you know, they're just developing and growing. But I appreciate that. I remember days with no lights. I remember days with, with no lights, electricity, no nothing. The only thing you got is cold water. And I have to go to church whenever they, you know, be in the church at an early age. In the hot house, hundreds of degrees. I'm in my boxer. Yeah. Yeah. Derek. Um, I just want to pray for people who, just like us, who don't have access to a, a rescue mission or access to what we have access to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please keep my son in prayer. Yes, sir. Uh, so far, he's doing good. Um, I also want to ask if you guys would pray for my sister. Um, I'm not sure if she goes to church. I know she believes, but I'm not sure if she goes like she should. Um, I want to keep her in prayer. And uh, I'll, again, I want to thank you. I want to thank all of you. <coughs> Yes, sir. All right, let's stand for prayer. Stephen, would you lead us, please? Lord God of heaven and earth, we thank you for the opportunity yes. tonight, Lord God, to be in your house. We thank you for your presence here tonight, Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm so grateful that you've heard each request that was made here, made here tonight, Lord God. You know about each one, and even those that are unspoken, Lord God, people have thought about but didn't voice, Lord. We lift up each request that was made here tonight to you, Father. We're glad that you listen and care and that you answer prayer, Father. So we ask your very best for each situation, Lord God. We ask that you continue to be in the service tonight. Your anointing be on Reverend Ledger tonight, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for each one here that doesn't know you to come to the saving knowledge of knowing you as Lord and Savior. We lift up our loved ones that aren't saved, Lord God. And we ask that you intervene in their lives and make that way, Lord. It's only you can do. Draw each one of our unsaved loved ones to you, Father, and bring them to your Son that they might know Jesus Christ as their Lord and salvation. And Lord God, in their hope in life, Lord Jesus that you are, Lord. We thank you for all you do for each one of us here tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence in each life here tonight, Lord God. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory of these testimonies and what you've done, Lord, and what you're doing and what you're going to do. We love you tonight, Lord, and we ask you in your precious name. Amen. 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 the service, bless the uh, offering, and bless everyone who brought you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
always been blessed with some good piano playing ever since I've been here. Amen. Well, all right, Miss Rhonda. Page 517, 517. 
it's time for Reverend Ledger to come bring us the message for this evening. Reverend Ledger. Thank you, Brother Steve, and that was some good singing this evening. Praise the Lord. Those of you that are participating, I'm glad to hear it. Did you know that the Lord is good? <laughs> and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, amen. Well, let's uh, look at one of the Bible characters this evening found in 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. If you'll stand together with the reading for the reading of the word, I'd appreciate it. 1 Samuel the 16th chapter. And while you're looking, if any of you don't have a large print Bible and would like one, please see my wife or I, get your name on our list and we'll get you one. 1 Samuel chapter 16, this evening, beginning at verse number 10. 1 Samuel 16, verse 10. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there, are there here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now when he was ruddy and weareth all of a beautiful countenance, goodly to look to, the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Father, we thank you for your word again tonight, and pray for that peculiar anointing of God that makes preaching effective to reach the hearts of our hearers. Lord, we're thy servant. We want to do thy will and pray that you would help us tonight as we speak. Give our hearers ears to hear and hearts to obey thee. And we'll thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, this was a very, very happy time for David and his family. God had been preparing David for a long time to be the king of Israel. But God also took the spirit of the Lord away from King Saul. And I think that some might question, why did God depart from King Saul. I mean, doesn't God love us all? Amen? And want to see us all to be saved and go to heaven? I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to the day when we can join the Fort Myers Rescue Mission Choir. The thousands of men who have met the Lord, who found Christ at this mission, Amen. gathered on that glorious day to sing a verse or two of that amazing grace to our Jesus. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And in my margin it says, terrified him. When I was a senior in high school, I fell in love. 
And like most high school relationships, soon after graduation, she found a new boyfriend and broke my heart. <laughs> the pain was excruciating. I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. I wept and cried for days. And I'm sure that most of us have had some painful breakups in our lives. The Bible records many partings, but the most painful of all is to separate ourselves from God. Did you know you can do that? Oh, but Brother Ledger, God is everywhere. He's all present indeed. He knows everything. He understands all things. But we can separate ourselves from God if we want to. Now, there's a common error believed by many people that God is always with me no matter what I do. Another grave error is, well, I left God, but He never leaves me. You ever heard that one? Now, if I told you my high school sweetheart left me, but I never left her, Kind of shows how un, uh, unlogical that is. When Paul said, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, Paul was really saying that Demas did really leave. Now the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The plain English is, is that God was no longer with Saul, for God departed from him. Now, Brother Ledger, you know, we've all read those Old Testament stories about those Bible people. But now, you know, we live in the New Testament now. Have you not ever read in the Word? where Paul said that the Old Testament writings were a schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ. We have not left the Old Testament, but we have indeed seen the fulfilling of the Old Testament in the New. Well, what about that rich young ruler that came to see Jesus? He didn't ask him to heal his child or give him anything. He asked him a very, very important question. He said, Lord, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Well, Jesus said to him, well, obey the commandments, the commandments of God. They're over here on the wall in case you haven't seen them for a while. You know what he said? All these I have kept from my youth up. Now Jesus beheld him and loved him and said to him, If you inherit everlasting life, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. But that rich young ruler departed from Jesus. The Bible says he was sad. Because he didn't want to give up his riches. Every once in a while we hear about one of these multi-billionaires who passes away. And somebody always says, I wonder how much they left behind. Every penny. <laughs> Jesus said to that rich young ruler, take up your cross 
and follow me. Are you willing to surrender your riches to Christ? Now, Brother Ledger, I live at the rescue mission. <laughs> you ought to know I don't have any riches. Oh, you'd be surprised how much you do have if you'd make an honest accounting. How about all the time you have left from now till the day that you die? That's an incredibly valuable resource. I remember reading about some queen who was on her deathbed and she said to the doctor, I'll give you half of my kingdom if you can give me six more months to live. The doctor said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't do that. Surrender what you have left of your life and follow the Savior. Well, how about um, money? Ooh, money? Oh, Ledger, you have to talk about that. You know, more people stumble over the gospel, over money, than anything else. There are people in this congregation, if an angel showed up at them tonight and said, all you have to do is lay your car keys and your wallet down on the counter there and come with me and you can go to heaven, they wouldn't go. Well, Brother Ledger, I don't have any money. I hardly got two quarters to rub together right now. Well, what about all the money you're going to earn in the rest of your life? They say that can amount to quite a bit, especially if a person begins to follow the Savior. All of a sudden, we're not using our money for all those sinful activities and my, it's amazing how far it goes, even after we pay our tithes and offerings. Jesus said, we shall be held accountable for every idle word we speak. <laughs> well, if we're going to be held accountable for all our idle words, what about all our wasted money? You remember that guy in the Bible called the prodigal son? The Bible said he wasted his substance in riotous living. I was having a Bible study with some very young children one time. And I said, do you know what prodigal means? They had no clue. It means wasteful. The wasteful son. I can just see someone at the judgment seat of Christ in my imagination giving an accounting to the Lord when he hears the sound of backup beepers behind him. And turning around, he sees dump trucks backing up to him, dumping huge piles of cigarette butts at his feet. Can you imagine that? The lifetime of a smoker all in one pile. Testimony of the wasted money charged to our account. I'll tell you, I was astounded the other day. I was sitting in the convenience store parking lot waiting for my father-in-law to use the restroom. And I looked up at the wall, the, the window of the restroom, and it said, you can get a deal on a pack of cigarettes here for eight bucks. Hmm. Does that work out to $80 a carton? When I quit in 1979, they were 35 cents a pack. Paul told Timothy some had departed from the faith 
and that in the end times many more shall do so. And I'd like to point out to you that um, it's not possible to depart from the grace of God until you are first in it. So the question is, why did the Spirit of the Lord depart from King Saul? I can tell you in a word, and if you read his life story, you'll find out yourself. He consistently refused to obey God. Now, some men think that God is such a tyrant that he rejects men simply because he preordained them to be damned. That's not in the Bible. God has not preordained anybody to be damned or be saved. But God has called us, and he's waiting for us to answer him. God departs from men for one reason, one reason only. They willfully and purposely disobey his plain command. Now, King Saul would want to argue with me. He argued with Samuel the prophet. He said, but I did obey the Lord. Well, yes and no. He did obey some of the commandment of God, but he didn't do the whole thing. Samuel said, I thought God told you to wipe out all those cattle that the Emicalites had. What is this lowing of oxen I hear? And Saul said, oh, well, um, yeah, God did tell us to destroy all of them, but we saved the best of the oxen to give a sacrifice to God. And then Samuel made that great statement. It is better to obey God than bring him a sacrifice. Now men are not like Eve, for the Bible says she was deceived by the serpent. But men are like Adam, who knowing the judgment of God openly rebelled against him and did what he wanted to do. And then when God said, why did you do this? You know what Adam said? That woman you gave me. Blaming others for his sin. Jesus said, I am the only way to escape the damnation of hellfire. The only way. I think a lot of preachers are afraid to say that nowadays. There is only one way to heaven. By repenting of our sins and turning from our wicked ways to Christ, we may be saved. There is no other way in the universe to be saved from a devil's hell except by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we reject Christ and his offer of pardon for our sins, that is to reject the only possible way to be saved. The Bible says, No other name given under heaven may, whereby we must be saved but our Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord left Saul because he insisted on having his own way. You know, I like to tell folks, King Saul really loved being king. You know why? Because he got to tell everybody else what to do. But nobody could tell him what to do. Not even God. I ask you, does that sound familiar? Now, Saul's sinful disposition 
is the same one that all men have when they come into this world. David in the Psalms said, In sin my mother did conceive me. David did not mean his mother committed adultery. But he proclaimed the truth that all men are born into this world polluted by sin. Now it's not our fault that we were born in sin. It's not our fault that we inherited a sinful disposition from our ancestor, great, 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 great grandfather, Adam. God does not condemn us for having that old man in our soul. It's not our fault. But God is angry with sinners every day because men refuse to submit themselves to him to have that thing cleaned out of their heart. To resist God's plan for pardon and purity is an insult to God. Our Lord suffered and died on an old rugged cross that we may be freed from sin. King Saul's stubborn, rebellious attitude is what caused the creator of the universe to reject him. I can't think of anything more fearful of all than to be abandoned by God. He would not yield himself to God, and you and I are in the same predicament. If we do not yield ourselves to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, God will reject us. When we read Saul's life story, and you ought to take the time to read it, it's pretty detailed. Somebody titled his life story as The Road to Endor. You know what Endor was? Endor was the place where Saul went to the witch to ask advice because God didn't talk to him anymore. We see that not just once, but many times, the Lord tried to convince Saul to turn from his own ways. In the beginning, he was humble and teachable, but his pride was his downfall. You know, this is why some Christians seem to be doing well, sometimes even for years, but sometimes they, after that they suddenly crash into some horrible sin. They did not suddenly fall, but a hidden rebel in their heart defeated them. God spoke to them about it, but they refused to heed the Spirit's word. Now I ask you this evening, Christians, is your heart open to God? Is every part of you clearly in the light? Are you hiding anything from the Holy Spirit? Do you really love Jesus Christ with your whole heart as far as you know? At the end of Saul's life, he said, The Lord has departed from me. Don't wait until that time. Own your crimes now. Confess your rebellion against your Creator now. Beg Christ for mercy now while the door of mercy is still open. Now, there are two men named Saul in the Bible. This King Saul was Saul, and there was another Pharisee named Saul. The Saul of the New Testament surrendered his life to Christ, and was renamed Paul. Paul has written one-third of the New Testament. 
And this is his testimony at the end of life. He's writing to Timothy, his son in the Lord, and he's about to be executed for his faith. Nero, the emperor, has had enough of him, and he's about to have his head taken off. And here's what Paul says to Timothy in his last letter to his spiritual son. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. What a glorious way to end life's journey. Let's stand together. But now I want to read the last testimony of King Saul. His final words before he entered the last battle in his life. He said, I have erred exceedingly. I have played the fool. God has departed from me and answereth me no more. What shall your end be? Like Saul the Pharisee or Saul the king? If you want to pray this evening, the altar is open. How about you? The way of the transgressor is hard, but the way of life is life and peace. Won't you come to Christ tonight? Ask him to forgive you and cleanse your heart and make you a real Christian believer. You know, there are some prayer requests tonight that God would bring peace and harmony and unity at Fort Myers Rescue Mission. I had to think to myself, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I think that if he would bring some peace in your heart, it would help the peace at the rescue mission. So what shall your end be? Like Saul or like Saul? How about you? Do you need to pray tonight? Well, one has come to pray. I appreciate some of the ministers would come and pray with him. I'm going to ask my wife to dismiss us in prayer. Jesus. Amen. Lord, it's not.